Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning. Back on the topic of the week one matchup between the LA Chargers and the Washington football team. Today we're looking at the top fantasy picks on Thrive Fantasy. Remember to use thrivefantasy.com or Thrive Fantasy on the App Store. Before we get into the video, question of the day, and it happens to actually be one of the over under picks for Justin Herbert. How many touchdowns do you guys think he's going to throw? Drop that in the comments below, and throughout the video, you'll hear our answer. One more thing about Thrive Fantasy. Remember to use our code 2MW to make your picks on game day. But let's start right here, Jay, with these Chargers props that you see. What are you thinking? First one right away yeah, start with at, Justin the top. at the top. Justin Herbert, 277.5 total yards. The Cat had, what, 4,500 yards-ish last year and only 15 games now. He is facing Washington's defense, but I do like the fact that they gave him rushing yards here. No, I think Justin Herbert could throw 300 yards alone in this game, and, you know, he's not Kyler Murray Lamar where he's going to pick up 100 yards on the ground. But with Chase Young coming after him, he might need a scramble, and that could give you an extra roughly for Herbert probably 8 to 15 yards in this game, which isn't huge again, but that could be the small factor when, you know, you're taking a pick. Every yard counts, obviously. So... Personally, for me, I'm definitely picking over on the yardage one. I just think this is going to be a competitive game. It might not be an absolute shootout of 35 to 42. That is not needed to put up a lot of yards. He's done it before last year, and the Chargers didn't get in a bunch of super high scoring games. And like I said, he averaged, I think, right around 270 or 280 last year. So I definitely think he could do this in week one in Brandon Staley's offense. And then you could see right there, passing yards is kind of right there behind it. That one I would also agree again. That's kind of why they're not giving him extra 15 yards, you know, or excuse me, 50 yards. You see there's only a 17-yard difference between total and passing, so they're expecting about 17 on the ground. I think that might be a small stretch, but Chase Young coming after him. Justin Herbert, 6'6", got some straightaway speed. I could see it happening, so both of those I would go over. You go ahead and talk about the yards before I get into touchdowns. Yeah, uh, looking at the first two, uh, I'm more attracted just to the, the pure passing yards one, but yeah. you're right that with the pressure he's likely going to face there in the backfield, that the odds that he's got to get out of the pocket and, and move the ball on his uh, with his feet, pretty likely. Um, I'm trying to remember what I said. Score prediction, I think I said 21-17. And overall, we both thought it was going to be a pretty low-scoring yeah. game. Um, but at the same time, I, I would like to hit the over, or like to go over on Justin Herbert. I think the average was maybe a little closer to 290, but it yeah. was upper 200s was his yard average last year. Uh, and they that was with a game where they got shut out 45-0 to and where they won seven games, 7-9 yeah. last year. So, so it doesn't... They, they don't need to have a great game or a high-scoring win for Justin Herbert to produce yards. So for pretty much the same reason Jay says, uh, yeah, I like this over. We, we know Justin Herbert's electric, and he, he's going to find a way to, to get the balls downfield uh, to uh, to Keenan Allen and, and get those yards. Yeah, and we got to remember, he's playing Fitz here. You know, Fitz isn't Brady or Mahomes, but we remember last year, Herbert's gone toe-to-toe with Brady, with Brees. He's gone toe-to-toe with Mahomes, and if it gets into a shootout, if it comes down to that, we know Herbert has that arm, and whether – Obviously, you're a Chargers fan, you're a Washington fan, you're going to be rooting for your team to win, but if you're just looking to make some money, you're just hoping for some yeah. yards. And I definitely think with Fitzmagic having his magic happen, usually in the first few weeks of football, the shootout's going to happen, and I definitely think the yards can happen. And that kind of overlaps into touchdowns. I just think 31 touchdowns with 10 interceptions last year and only 15 games, that puts him at an average of just over two touchdowns a game. He just needs two in this one. I think he can definitely get it now. We gotta remember Brandon Staley's offense, Joe Lombardi's offense, the offense quarter. It could be different from last year, but I just think two touchdowns for all you need on is over. That seems really simplistic for me. And then you no. see Austin Eckler. Gotta remember Joe Lombardi, like I said, the offensive coordinator for the Chargers, was formerly the offensive coordinator for the Saints, and you saw how much Alvin Kamara got that football. If the transition's over to Austin Eckler, who we know is just as good at receiving back as Kamara. I don't know if I would actually put money on these, but if you told me to say yes or no over on total yards on both receiving and rushing receiving total, I would probably say over. I'm pretty optimistic, and it's hard for me to take unders, but again, I just believe in this type of offense. They're going to need some numbers, and with, like I said, Lombardi's transition, overs all the way on these five that I see. Yeah, looking at Justin Herbert, uh, I definitely want to say over on the one and a half total passing touchdowns. Uh, if the Chargers win this game, and if they score touchdowns, it's going to be through the air, uh, whether that's Austin Eckler or Justin Jackson out of the backfield. I'm definitely looking for a Jared Cook touchdown through the air, uh, their new tight end to replace Hunter Henry, or Keenan Allen. Whatever it is, I don't see Austin Eckler, I mean, unless he, he breaks away from outside the 10. If they get inside the 10, inside the 5, it's going to have to be through the air because I just don't think they have a back to really punch it in the end zone. Um, and even if it's Austin Eckler that scores, it's likely going to be a pass out of the backfield. So, yes, uh, all the way over for me on one and a half total touchdowns. I think the 
the uh, Chargers will score three, and I think they'll all, yeah. all be through the air. Uh, now I look at the next two. I don't really like the nine, uh, 91 and a half total yards from Eckler. I lot. think, yes, be, it's because of the rush yards that I don't yeah. like that one. I think he's due for, for sub-50 rush yards because it's going to be such a pass-heavy game uh, with that front four of um, – of Washington, it's just going to be tough for Eckler to run the ball effectively. On the on the receiving yards uh, one, on the other hand, I definitely want to take the over. I think Eckler will be effective out of the backfield through the air. So uh, the only one I'm going to say under on is the total yards for Eckler. I think the other four are definitely overs. Yeah, good opinion. Uh, we want to keep scrolling. Oh uh, yeah, go ahead. I think we got to go down to find Washington's here. I think uh, we got Fitzpatrick and Washington. So that's really all for the Chargers. Now we're looking at the Washington yeah, football Fitz. Team. Like I said, this is all – it's tough. It's He's going to give you 350 yards, three touchdowns, or 150 yards, and three picks. It's tough, but I believe in Fitzmagic in week one. And I would take over on his yards. Looking at his touchdowns, still a little bit of question mark to it, especially Antonio Gibson. You know, Antonio Gibson right there below him, who I'll get into in a second. He started 10 games last year and had 11 touchdowns, so they might be handing it off to him. And that's to say, you know, he caught some of those touchdowns, but still – I'm a little iffy on the touchdowns one. That's one I would almost just avoid. You know, you only got to pick two of these to make some money here. So you could take Fitz over and Herbert over and you're done. But if you're feeling risky, Fitz, I, I would maybe lean towards over. But again, this is not one I'm super comfortable with. And Antonio Gibson, this is one I really like. Like I said, he put up some numbers last year. 700 rushing yards, not fantastic. But we got to remember he was hurt. And in the beginning, he wasn't really given the number one role. And he is a great guy out of the backfield. He used to be a receiver in college. So he's got hands. He's going to be a safety blanket for Fitzpatrick. He's a 6'2 back. That's big for a running back. I believe in him to definitely put up 70 over 74 yards in this game. Yeah, looking at Fitzpatrick, uh, of the two props there available, I want to go, I would say, I want to go over on the passing yards, but under on the touchdowns. Uh, the last uh, team Fitzpatrick was the established starter for at least for the beginning of the season was Tampa Bay because with Miami he kind of split time with Tua uh, and I believe in the first two maybe three games he came out and put up 400 yards and a couple touchdowns yeah. for Tampa Bay uh, so I think the yardage one is definitely a, an over um, Fitzpatrick seems to be a guy that that's good for a big player a random big pass down the yeah. field in open space uh, which is why I want to take the yardage over but when we get inside the red zone with Fitzpatrick I just, I mean, I don't have any stats pulled up or off the top of my head or anything, but I just feel like he's not great at pushing the ball in the end zone. Yeah. That's where the Antonio Gibson uh, work, he's going to do the work for him. So an open field, big pass plays, I like Fitzpatrick, so that's why I want to go over on the passing yards. But the touchdowns one, uh, I think he's good for one through the air, but I'd look for Antonio Gibson to do the work for the rest of the uh, Washington football team scoring. And uh, you said you made some good points about Antonio Gibson. I'm not sure if I have a strong enough opinion about him to say over or under, but you made some good points, and I think he will be doing a lot of the work, uh, at least scoring-wise, for Washington. Yeah, and looking at the last two, Logan Thomas, Terry McLaurin, both of these, in my opinion, are dependent on Curtis Samuel. He's a receiver from the Panthers. They brought in a free agency, one of Terry McLaurin's best friends. The number two option, he's a good receiver. You guys know who he is. But there's question he will not play week one, so that determines it for me. If he doesn't play, I think both of these are overs. Terry's his number one option. Logan Thomas possibly the next best safety blanket or the best safety blanket outside Antonio Gibson. That just seems, I don't want to say easy money, nothing's easy, but if those two are the best pure receivers in the receiving room, I think they could both put up some yards, especially if you agree Fitzpatrick is getting yep. over the 264 top. But, again, if Curtis Samuel does play, these numbers will probably be adjusted, and then you could just take a look then. Yeah. Uh, again, you made a good point there. If I'm going to take the over for Fitzpatrick, then i then I got to have faith in, in Thomas yeah. and McLaurin to break those over. So I think both of those are good over. So take, really, that's all for the video. Again, Washington versus L.A. Week 1 matchup. Those are the prop picks. And back to the question today we asked about uh, – Herbert over under one and a half. Jay, I mean, kind of already said it, but recap that. Yeah, I actually think he will get over the one and a half, and I'm actually going to predict he'll double it. I do think Justin Herbert will have yep. three passing touchdowns. I think three. I think the Chargers score 21 points, and they're all going to be through the air. Cool. From Herbert, remember, you guys, this is ThriveFantasy.com. Go check out these props for game day. That's all for the video.